Hello, welcome everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for this week's object talk. My name is Maria, and I'm the Collections Engagement Assistant here at the Jewish Museum London. Today we'll be exploring an object from our collection that exemplifies a unique Jewish craft of lace making named Spaniard Arbet. You can see in your screens right now an atara, which is the color of a prayer shawl called talit. Now I have one right here with me from our handling collection, and you can see in this example that the center of one of the long sides of talit is often distinguished by some form of decoration. And this area is worn at the neck. When the talit is placed over one's head, then the talit is placed right at the top, which is considered a place of honor. In this illustration of a man wearing a talit over his head, we can see exactly where this band would be placed. And atara is the name of the band, which actually means crown. It's often made of rich embroidery with complex patterns and valuable materials. This example is composed of the main neckband, and then you can see it has two side pieces made of linen and silver lace, both the central band and the side pieces. It was produced in the late 19th century and donated to the museum in 1989. As you can see, a close-up of our pattern, it has small spirals that come together to form two types of floral motifs in the center. We have the one on the left, which is a small square, and then the one on the right, which is a circle, and they both have the floral motif in the center surrounded by this geometric pattern. Between these two, we actually have a slightly bigger flower, which includes leaves. The border around the one on the right and the atara itself is almost like small fish scales. Their spirals place slightly on top of each other. The color of this atara, as you can see, is brown, and that's due to the oxidization of the silver. This is one of the few atarots in our museum and the only one complete with the side pieces. But what truly distinguishes this object and what piqued my interest in choosing it as this week's object talk is its provenance. Now I've mentioned before that it was made in Poland, but more specifically, it comes from Galicia. Now the Galicia that I'm talking about isn't the Galicia that you might be thinking about, which is the autonomous community in the Northwest of Spain. This Galicia was actually a small kingdom uh, in the modern day border between Poland and the Ukraine. It was annexed by the Austro-Hungarian Empire and then occupied several times throughout the 20th century. Eventually, the territory was divided between Poland and the Ukraine. From the 18th century, the Jewish community was recorded as the third biggest ethnic group in the region. And in the following centuries, the population grew from around 6% to almost 11% of the total population. Galician Jews were a subgroup of the Ashkenazi diaspora, so they spoke Yiddish as their first language. It was in this community that this unique craft of Spaniard Arbet was developed in the 19th century. The exact origin of the name is slightly unknown. It is believed to derive from the Yiddish verb to spin, which is spinnen, and Arbet, which means work. So it loosely translates into spun work. So what is exactly Spaniard Arbet and what makes it so unique? Well, as a technique, it is characterized by a lavish use of metal strips, usually silver or silver coated, and occasionally gold. These are wrapped over or looped around a cotton or linen core to form dense floral, floral and geometric patterns. And we can see that in the Jewish Museum's Atara. Now this craft required a special instrument which was a table with a rotating drum and a wooden frame with hanging bobbins. The Jewish Museum unfortunately doesn't have an example of this instrument, but these pegs we can see here on the right uh, used to produce regular lace, would have been similar to the ones used in Spaniard Arbet. These bobbins would be threaded with cotton or linen and then woven to produce a cord. The metal would be interlaced with this cord following a paper pattern that would be placed on the drum. And although this technique can be compared to regular lace making, 
the drum in which it was made and the frame for hanging the bobbins is actually quite unique to Spaniard artifacts. The end result of this process is a richly decorated band with a slight weight to it due to the amount of material that is used. This close-up of the Atara in our collection shows clearly how much cord is in the back of the Atara. And you can see how the material is woven exactly to produce this intricate floral pattern. We can see the linen cord right at the back. And then we can see also how the metal strips are placed perfectly so the cord isn't visible at all from the front. Now the origins of this craft are commonly attributed to a man, a man named Mordecai Margulis. He was born in the Ukraine in 1830 and he traveled across the border to escape the Russian army and settled in eastern Galicia. He established a workshop and began to develop this technique, producing items exclusively for the Jewish community. And his work was very popular, especially when it came to ceremonial clothing, which does explain why a lot of surviving examples of Spaniard Arbet are actually Aserot. The industry declined by the 1930s, perhaps due to increasing production costs and difficulty in acquiring silver thread. But this craft carried on being produced by Jewish communities across the world, although at a reduced scale. Now, with the knowledge that this craft originated in a Yiddish-speaking community and the knowledge of the technique behind it, spun work does seem to be a fitting translation for Spaniard Arbeit. However, Spaniard Arbeit, spelled slightly differently, means Spanish work. This implies some sort of connection with Spanish lace uh, making, particularly with the practice of incorporating silver or gold threads practiced by the Jewish communities in the 15th century in Spain. There is no evidence to connect the two, actually, uh, but this parallel does demonstrate how difficult it is to trace cultural practices when communities move and spread out. This also means that with some objects, it can be difficult to accurately attribute their origins. Just as community migrates, objects move between countries and they carry with them techniques but sometimes not enough information. Now, all other examples that we have in our collection of atarot and textiles with metal thread incorporated into them don't carry with them enough information for us to know their origins. The atarot that you can see, and that was a focus of this talk, once again stands out because we have a concrete notion that it was made in Galicia exactly during the period when Spaniard Arabet was abundant in the Jewish community. This makes it a unique object in our collection and a magnificent representation of the only textile technique that we know is exclusive to Ashkenazi Jewish products. That's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about this amazing Atara in our collection. And please join us again on January 5th for our next object talk.